Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris or Velasos on social media. Welcome back to So Over 50 podcast on So Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. A creative person isn't messy. They just have ideas lying around everywhere. I think that describes my space very well. That's how Melanie of So Melwick describes her sewing space. She's today's So Over 50 podcast guest. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters of this podcast. I'm able to provide So Organized Style podcast to you for free because of their monthly contributions. So over 50 intersects with all communities. We're a community that is so over ageism. How are you, Melanie? I am good, Maria. Where do you live? Do you have snow at the moment? Actually, we missed it completely. Everyone on all around has got it, but it always splits over our town. So we just had a cold, windy day, but no snow today. Oh, that's good. Melanie, thank you for inviting me to your home today. It's nice to be here. I followed you for many, many years, so I'm really pleased that I could have you on the podcast today. It just happens when you've known someone on different platforms and then you follow them on Instagram. Finally, when you get to meet them, it's like, oh, we've known each other for years. It certainly is. Melanie, how did you develop your Instagram name, Sir Melwick? You can find me at So Melwick on Instagram. That came about because I'm Melwick on Pattern Review, where I've been much longer. And that was because in the old days, when you went online, you picked a fake name. You never put your real name online. And that was just an amalgam of all my initials to make that word. And so I have been Melwick online for about 20 years. (laughs) I just carried it over. And that's where I've met you is through Pattern Review. That's right. You must have hundreds of reviews. I think I'm up to 300 now. But it has been almost 10 years. It has. What sewing projects are you working on this week? Well, this week I am sewing a spring dress, which no one who knows me will be surprised by. I'm sewing it in a really fun novelty print using Butterick 6727. And I'm making it as part of my contribution to the Fabric Bill blog. Fabric Bill is a Canadian fabric company. It has a blogger program and we we blog for them about once or twice a year. And this is one of my projects. It's it's a really fun fabric. I'm really having fun with it. How many weeks do you get to work on that project before you have it published? They're very generous. They basically do one in the spring and the fall and you get to choose your project. I would say you probably have a good month to work on it, sometimes a little longer. So it's not onerous. It's actually a lot of fun. Oh, good. It's good when you can be part of another organization and still enjoy it. Yeah, there's no pressure. If there was, I wouldn't be doing it. Tell us about your work with the Stratford Garment Guild. All right. Well, the Stratford Garment Guild started in the fall of 2019. Unlike Australia or the States, we don't have a national sewing guild in Canada. Uh, I believe there's a national quilting guild, but nothing for garment sewists. So we don't have a guild to join. So we decided that it would be a lot of fun to start our own local meetup guild. And at the time that I was thinking of starting it, I only knew of two other groups like this in Canada. One was the Atlantic Sewing Guild out in Nova Scotia, and that's been running for many years. And the other one was the Ottawa Garment Guild, which had just started. So I contacted both of them, and both of them were so helpful with all sorts of advice and help. And so we started up our own local group. Um, I contacted a few of my local sewing friends, people that I knew, and some people that I had only met through Pattern Review, even though they lived in my community. So we decided to start it up, which we did in the fall of 2019. But of course, because it was the fall of 2019 that we started, we only had a few meetings before we had to figure out what to do and everything shut down. So we decided to move to Zoom and we did our next two seasons on Zoom, which actually gave us a lot of opportunities to get some great speakers from around the world. Quite a few from Australia, actually. We had a lot of fun meeting people and now we're we're back meeting in person. It's an organization to connect people who love to sew garments in our local community to make those connections. And we've met a lot of people doing that. We have a monthly meeting, we have a speaker, We've created some special events like fabric swaps, which are always a lot of fun. We've had some social nights. We've held workshops. So we're hoping to keep it going, maybe grow it a little. It's a pretty great group. A lot of really fun people who come out every month. And I would say there's a lot of so over 50 sewists in that group as well. 
Oh, wow. Sounds like there's a lot going on for that very small local group. Yeah, it is a small community. So it's nice to be able to have a way to get together with other people. And, you know, since we started, I've seen in the last couple of years, a couple more groups like this start in Canada. And one of them is just down the road in a bigger city, the Garment Sewist Guild of Kitchener-Waterloo. There's another sewing meetup group now in Calgary, Calgary Sews. They're really active online. And so it's really nice to see other people doing the same kind of thing and building local communities where you can, you know, meet your fellow sewists in real life. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And at least you can have a conversation about what you're wearing and people don't glaze over. Yeah. And if, you know, you reach out and touch someone's (laughs) sleeve or skirt, no one's going to get freaked out by it. We expect it. It's a great way to, to, you know, continue skill building and have a lot of fun talking about what you love. With the Stratford Garment Guild, does it have its own Instagram account too? It does. It's just Stratford Garment Guild. We don't post a lot, mainly just meeting announcements, but we're hoping to include things like reposting members' posts and things like that. Right now, it's just me doing all of that, so I haven't really got a system going yet, but we do have a lot of people in our group who are willing to volunteer, so we're hoping once we get that all sorted, we're going to try to make things more more active and enjoy it a lot more too. Hopefully as the weather warms up and you can all get together, you can have more time to nut out what it is you'd like to do going forward. Exactly. Yeah. You've told us what you're working on this week. What do you usually sew? Well, I love dresses. They're my wardrobe staple. I mainly wear dresses. I just love them. No one, I don't think would be surprised to know that I have a lot of dresses in my wardrobe, but that doesn't stop me from sewing more. I have almost never seen a dress pattern I don't like. So I always like to try something with a new detail or or a new fabric and keep doing that. So I would say that I'm usually sewing a dress most any time you would talk to me. But that said, I'm also getting really interested in learning how to sew more complex things. I've I've bought the Jessica Blazer pattern and course from Closet Core. So my goal is to learn some more complex tailoring this year. So that's what I'm hoping to start sewing. Oh, that's good. That gives you the ability to have another layer to wear over the dresses that you already have in your wardrobe. That's what I was thinking too. So I'm I'm hoping to learn more techniques that I haven't tried before. We've known each other for quite a while. How long have you been sewing and how did you learn to sew? I have been sewing since home at classes in grade eight. So when I was about 13, but I was really bad in home ec. I was a terrible sewist. It took me the whole term to sew a t-shirt dress. I think that my home ec teacher would be shocked if she saw what I was sewing now. <laughs> I think she would she would not believe it. That was just the beginning learning. I think I really started sewing actively when I was about 19. I was home for the summer from university and my mom, who sews a lot, I decided that I wanted to learn. So she taught me. And so that's when I sort of caught the real sewing bug. And I bought myself a sewing machine as my university graduation present. And I sort of sewed on and off for a long time, about, I would say probably 10 years ago. I don't know why, but I just got the bug. Like I was so enthused about my sewing suddenly that instead of having one box of patterns and maybe five or six pieces of fabric, I just blew up and I have like almost a thousand patterns now. They're my weakness. And I have a stash and I just love sewing all the time. So while I've been sewing for a long time, I'd say it's about the last 10 years that I've been really, really enthusiastic and continually sewing all the time. I mean, it's a good outlet for yourself as a creative person, but also if you like the analytic side of it, you know, there's the instructions that you've got to go through. And now with the Jessica Blazer that you're about to attempt and do really well, because I know you sew really well. It's going to be another step up of your skills. Exactly. It's like you say, I find it such a challenge because I love the math part of it, of the pattern making and adjusting. But again, I also love the creativity of fabric and color. So I think it's just the perfect, perfect hobby. I just love it. Oh, good. I love it too. Melanie, where can we find you online? Because we know we can find you on Instagram. I'm mostly on Instagram, like I said, under So Melwick. You can find me on Pattern Review under Mel Wick. I also do still keep a blog, and that's um, followingthethread.ca. I try to post a couple times a week. And on my blog, I do actually share quite a bit about the sewing books that I'm reading as well, whether that's instructional or fiction. So that's, that's where I am. I didn't know that about what else you put on your blog. Yeah, every Sunday I try to do a book review. And you said it could either be a sewing book or 
Usually it's sewing books. They're either technique books or fashion history or something like that, or fiction that has something to do with sewing. But I also have been book blogging for 20 years and, and I have a book blog that's still semi-active. So you can find that. I link to it on my Instagram as well. And is there a particular author that you love to read? Oh, so many, <laughs> so many. I, I, I don't think I can think of just a single one. It depends what kind of book we're talking, but I like a lot of um, women authors, um, especially women in translation. The last few years, I've been really focusing on that because there's so many amazing writers. And I just read a Ukrainian writer named Oksana Zabushko. She's well known in Ukraine. And I read her massive, massive novel, called the Museum of Abandoned Secrets last year. And it was so, so good. I recommend checking out some of these novels by women in translation because you get a whole different perspective on life. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'm glad I asked that follow-up question because I never knew that about you. Oh, yes. I've been reading and reviewing for a long time. I do it partly as part of my job, but mainly as my own personal hobby. So what state is your sewing room in at the moment? Um, well, I sew in a really small space in the corner of my basement. It's always kind of overflowing with bits of various projects. A creative person isn't messy. They just have ideas lying around everywhere. I think that describes my space very well. Thank you. And how did you discover the Cyber 50 community? Well, I was lucky, actually. I, I saw the birth of the Sew Over 50 community when the socialist blog way back when was calling out for people to start specific niche communities and Judith jumped up and volunteered to start this so over 50 community. I wasn't 50 at the time, but I followed along because I thought it was a great concept. And it's kind of funny how excited you get for your 50th birthday to come when you know, oh, I can finally be an official part of So Over 50. So it really made it the 50th birthday. <laughs> I think that was what I was most excited about turning 50, that I was official. So yeah, I've been following it for a while. You know, a lot of people say that they get really excited when they actually do turn 50 because they can then follow Sober 50. It's really lovely to hear. And by the way, you don't have to be 50 to follow Sober 50. But it's fun to be part of the official crowd. Yeah, I know. Most people worry about turning 50, the big five O, But I think this is one of the nice parts of it. It really was. I think something that made that transition to 50 actually something to look forward to. And I was really excited about it. So my next question is related to that. Are there any pattern designers that you've seen who feature older sewers on their grids or on their patterns? I know there's been a lot more than in the past. I think that it's more reliably seen when the pattern designer themselves is a little older. Uh, they might be a little more aware of the Sew Over 50 idea. So people like Style Falcon, who designs specifically for an over 50 form, uh, Merchant Mills, Folkwear, when you do see the designers being a bit older, you, you see more regular appearances of people who are over 50. It's good to have that visibility in our sewing space because it gives us a bit more encouragement to continue to sew, but also we can see how it fits on us in the body that we have right now. Exactly. I really value seeing people not only of my height and shape, but also my age because you make different choices. It's nice to see people who may give you ideas on what you can try next. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, wow, she looks great in that. Or that's such a neat way to put something together. So it's nice to see people who have different options and, and have tried different things. It's very encouraging. It is. Never forget all the aspects that make who you are up. Well, I think that the reading and, and the um, book reviews is a big part of what I do because I'm a librarian in my day job and I love sewing with fabrics with text prints on them and things like that. So I think it does, it does feed in to my sewing habits. Before we finish, what advice would you give to people who are about to sew again after not having sewn for many years? I say just go for it. You know, ease back into it maybe with an easy pattern or with some cheaper fabric so you don't feel intimidated but you know just try it it'll come back to you and if you make mistakes well that's how you learn and it'll come back a lot quicker than you think it will and there's so many more learning opportunities now if you're stuck you can just look it up on youtube or look up someone's blog and you're all set i find a lot easier to get back into it now with so many more options just do melanie thank you so much for coming on to the podcast for cyber 50 and for letting us know about all the things that you do in your sewing life and in your reading life too. Well, thanks so much for asking me. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Good night. Thank you. 
Like this episode of Sub 50 Podcast on So Organised Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with the permission of Melanie, sound by bensound.com. Many thanks for the ongoing support of the podcast Patreon contributors. Their ongoing support enables me to develop this podcast for you for free. Make sure you direct message Sandy at Sober50 on Instagram to contribute to the ongoing posts and challenges they provide the community of over 49,000 followers. You can subscribe to So Organised Style Podcast with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free 750 podcast archive on Soul the Nice Style Podcast. We look forward to joining you in your same room next time. Stay safe, everyone.